Welcome everyone to Starting Your Business, Increase Your Chances of Success. My name is George McAllister and I am a Regional Center Director for the Small Business and Technology Development Center, also known as the SBTDC. In this third module, we're going to go over the funding options available to a startup. Throughout this presentation, I'm going to be going over the material in our Business Startup and Resource Guide. This free guide is available on our website. You can download it at any time. A lot of people find it helpful to have this guide in front of them as we're going through this discussion so they can take notes. However, it is not required and the choice is yours. Throughout the discussion, if anybody has any questions, feel free to raise your hand and I'll be glad to address them. One of the questions I get a lot from folks looking for funding is how do I find the various funding sources? Where are they? Well, it's a valid question and the SBTDC has addressed it. We now have a guide called the Capital Opportunities for Small Businesses. This is a document that lists all the funding sources available to start up and existing businesses in North Carolina. Not only does it list it, but it also gives you a lot of information about what these funding sources are looking for, as well as contact information. They have private sector companies listed there, as well as government related. On the government side, the list includes federal, state, and local governments. We update this on a regular basis. It has well over 100 pages in it. And the best thing of all, it's free. And you can download it from our website at any time. I highly suggest that if you are going to be looking for funding, that you refer to this guide. It will save you a lot of time. Trust me. It is probably one of the most accessed publications we have on our website. So feel free to use it. <coughs> The strategy that I see a lot that people use, ready, fire, aim. Mm -hmm. Not the strategy you need to be using when looking for funding. You need to be prepared. Here are the couple of the questions that you need to have answered. How much money do you need? When do you need it? What will the money be used for? You just can't go in front of a lending source and say, Oh, I don't know. I think I need 50, 75, maybe 100,000. Uh, buy a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Doesn't work. Doesn't work at all. When and how will the funding source get their money back? What's the possible return that the funding source can expect? And last but not least, do you have a business plan? Now, if you do not have a business plan, we discussed how to write a business plan in module two. And I would suggest that you go to module two and view the online video. They can find it very helpful as we move forward in this. So this is a strategy I see a lot. This is not a strategy that I encourage. Be prepared. Now regardless of the strategy used, here are a couple of the um, mistakes and issues that I see people making when they do go for funding. One, talking to the wrong funding sources. It's a waste of time. Yours and theirs. Again, that's where the SBTDC's capital opportunities for small businesses come into play. Use it. Cover-ups not telling the truth. Well, obvious there, just have to be careful. Uh, there's a lot of investigative work that goes into analyzing someone's proposal for financing, so make sure everything is accurate. Not enough information to make a decision. Again, you got to be prepared. These folks need the information to make a decision. It only hurts you if they don't have the information. Unrealistic expectations. Again, you've got to make sure you've documented the assumptions you have made based on your projections. Uh, yes? What if the banker thinks my projections are unrealistic, but I don't? That would never happen. That <laughs> <laughs> never happen. No, you see that a lot. Oh, you know, one of the dangers is you know, bankers are looking at this very conservatively. 
you as an entrepreneur are looking at this very enthusiastically. I wouldn't say it's the half full, half empty kind of deal, but it somewhat is. A couple of things you need to think of. First, you need to ask the banker why he or she feels this way. Secondly, what you may find is that the banker is just not that knowledgeable about your industry. So it may take a little education on your side to bring them up to speed as to why these numbers look in line. Also, make sure you've documented all your assumptions. That way you can show the banker your assumptions and say, look, this is how I came up with my numbers. Documenting assumptions is key. However, at the end of the day, the golden rule applies. And the golden rule is the person with the gold makes the rule. So you're going to have to come up with some compromise, some agreement with the banker that both of y'all can live with. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Okay. Well, and best of luck. You're not the first one to have this happen. The last one is getting mad. Don't get upset with the funding source, whoever it is. Don't do that. That doesn't help because a couple of things. One, the funding source knows a lot of people, and that person may be able to refer you to another source of funding that better suits your needs. Secondly, as you grow and prosper, this funding source may be a good source at a later date. So you don't want to burn your bridges now. So be careful with that. Okay? Now let's move into the four types of funding that we're going to discuss today. The first one is equity. Equity funding is selling ownership in your company. This type of funding requires no type of repayment requirement. Second type is debt. Debt is borrowing money. And the repayment criteria is very well spelled out. Third is grants. No repayment, no ownership requirement. However, this is the most misunderstood financing source there is. And the last is other. I sort of threw in a bunch of things in the other that I didn't see really fit with the other three. And we're looking at um, government sources and things like that. So that's what we're going to cover today. But I'm going to ask you a question first. Who do you think is the most common source of funding for your business? Who do you think? Who's the th who do you think the most common source is? And I guarantee you, you know this person's financial situation intimately. Who is it? You. You're it. It is very, very, very rare that you find a business that does not include some type of investment by the owner. If the owner is not investing in the company, what do you think other financing sources are thinking? If he or she's not willing to do it, why am I? So as we go through this, realize no matter how you invest in your company, it's you. And if you've got to play a role in that investment strategy. Now let's talk about equity funding in your business. Angel investors are the most common type of equity funding that you find in small businesses. They're all around us. First type, family and friends. These are folks that know you. They have a relationship with you. They want to see you succeed. They're investing primarily because of the relationship they have with you. That's where everybody goes first after themselves, of course. Next group, they are people with knowledge about your industry. They get it. They understand it. You don't have to explain to them what you're doing. They know what you're doing. They're either individuals or they're customers or potential customers. These are folks who want to keep using your services. So they want you to be around. The next group within this category are suppliers or potential suppliers. They want you to continue buying from them. So they're going to strengthen that relationship so you keep buying from them. The last group I call active investors. 
These are folks that typically don't know you, probably don't know the industry, and they have let it be known in the community that they are interested in investing in small businesses. So they're getting proposals on a regular basis, and they're taking yours and reviewing it, and they're comparing that to the stack of other ones that they have. That's usually the last group that people go after in the angel world. How do these angels go about looking at these proposals? What are they looking for? Well, it varies. Process varies. First thing that dictates how it goes is the relationship they have with you. Your brother is going to look at your company a little bit differently than an active investor who doesn't know you. So the process can be a little different. Secondly, it depends on the investment. How much money are they going to be putting into this? the role in the company. What role would you like for the angel investor to play in your company? Now your angel investor may have an idea, but you need to know this too. For example, do you want them to serve on your board? Would you like for them to become an employee? Or maybe just an outside advisor? Maybe just totally absent. Let me have your money and that's it. Don't call me, I'll call you. Maybe that's the way you want it. It's interesting because you may have your idea of how you see this angel fitting into your organization, but I can promise you the angel also has an idea of how they want to fit into the organization. Payback possibilities. How is the angel going to get their money back? The angel needs to know that as they're doing the analysis. Level of risk. You've got to be able to convince the angel that the risk is not that great. The lower the risk, the higher the return, the better the deal. So it's all going to vary depending on what the angel's needs are and how it fits their portfolio. Yes, you had a question. Yes, um, I currently have majority ownership of my company, so if I were to consider angel funding, would I lose that majority ownership? It depends. But you do need to know that if you do not have majority ownership, you lose a major control of your company. I'll give you an example. If you're investing $25,000 into your company, but you're asking angels to invest a half a million, sort of tough to keep the majority ownership there. But if you have invented a process and patented this process that turns water into gasoline, but you have no money, I think you could probably keep majority ownership in your company with something of that value. Another thing that the angels look at, though, is many angels do not want to own a significant part of the business because it's demotivating to you as the owner. If the only way the deal works is for the angel to own 80% of your company, how motivated are you going to be if you only own 20% of it? Yeah, not that motivated. So they may opt out of it because they don't want to set up a demotivating kind of situation. So again, it's all that relationship based. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, good question. Angels are all around us. They're all the contacts that you know. We've talked about a few of them before. They are business professionals. Bankers, CPAs, attorneys may be angels, or they may be able to refer you to angels. You also have angel networks and angel funds. They're all over the United States. An angel network is a group of angels who come together and they hear presentations from business owners who are interested in funding. If they like what they hear, then the individual members of the angel network will approach the business owner and start discussing possibility of investing. So it's the individuals within the network that will invest in the, co in the company. Unlike an angel fund, an angel fund is a group of individuals who have put money in the pot. They basically got a fund set up and they use the money out of that fund 
to invest in companies. So just like the network, entrepreneurs come in and they make presentations. And if the angels like what they hear, then they will invest out of the fund. But there's also a second source of financing. The angels themselves can invest in that company. So if for some reason the fund doesn't want to invest, there's nothing to stop the individual angel from investing. So a company has the opportunity of getting two types of investments. But these are very, these are very different types of organizations that you can be aware of, but a great source of funding. Another source of equity funding that gets a lot of play in the media, but very, very, very few startups are able to qualify is venture capital. So I'm bringing it up primarily because people ask me on a regular basis about venture capital and we need to let everybody know exactly what's involved in a venture capital firm. A venture capital firm is basically a company that raises money from individuals and institutions and then takes that money and invests it in companies. So they are doing the investment searching, analysis, and ongoing maintenance for the angels. They have very strict guidelines on what they're looking for. They go through a very systematic process. They typically will invest several hundred thousands of dollars or up into the millions to make it worth their while. They're looking for hyper growth opportunities. Most businesses that start out do not have hyper growth business models. This is they, what they want. They were liquidating six, seven years, five, six, seven years, somewhere around there. They want their money back. This may not be the model of a startup. So very few startups qualify for this. But because it's discussed so much, I just want to make sure everybody's aware of it. Let's go on to the next type of funding called debt funding. Talked about it earlier. You're borrowing money. What do you think the most common type of debt funding is? Thanks. Term loans, like a car loan. Term loan basically has a repayment schedule. I want you to make monthly payments of principal and interest for five years. Five years is called the term. They quote it months, 12 months, 24, 36, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 20, 30 years. And there's an interest rate attached to it. It can either be fixed or it can be variable. If it's variable, it's tied to the prime rate. And you hear bankers talk about prime plus one, prime plus two, things like that. In many cases, you do not need all the money at one time. You need it over a period of time. So if you need the money over a period of time, it doesn't make sense to take out a term loan and pay interest on money that you're not using. So the solution to that is a line of credit. A lot of credit is used to handle your short-term funding needs. You're only borrowing the money you need, and you're only paying interest on the money you use. I'll give you an example. I've got a client who has a catering company. Her typical catering contracts are two, three, four, five thousand dollars. But every now and then, she'll get a twenty-five, thirty, forty. $50,000 contract. Well, she doesn't have that kind of money. So what she does is she uses the line of credit to fund all the expenses necessary to fulfill the contract. She borrows the money out of the line of credit. Then once the event is over and the customer has paid the invoice, she takes the money and she pays off the line of credit. Otherwise, she would not be able to do the larger deals. This allows her the opportunity to bid on larger contracts. It's a great thing. She doesn't need the money all the time, only on large situations. Perfect use for her. 
there's several other types of funding that are like lines of credit. One's a second mortgage. This is very popular. With a second mortgage, you are borrowing money on the equity you have in your house and using that money to fund your business. Another one is credit cards. Yes, people do use credit cards to fund their business. Credit cards are not the problem. The problem I find with the credit cards is that people do not understand what the interest rates are, what the penalties will be for late payments, and when interest rates change. You need to read the fine print with this because it is not a funding source that has a constant interest rate. It can change on you. So you need to be aware of it. Regardless of the type of funding you're going for, credit cards or whatever, you need to make sure you do your cash flow projections. By doing your cash flow projections, you will then know if you can afford the cost of that type of funding. Do it. Very important. We've talked about the most common funding types in the world of debt. Most people, when they look for debt financing, go to the bank. However, there are a lot of other financing institutions other than banks that offer debt products. The five C's of credit. Five C's of credit have been around for many, 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 many years. And this is how bankers look at your loan proposal. They go through the five C's. The first C is capital. How much money are you putting into the business? As I mentioned before, if you're not putting money in the business, why should somebody else? Very important. And they're going to tell you how much they want you to put in the business. Second is collateral. Collateral is plan B. Of course, we hate to think of plan B because it's so drastic. But plan B is if you're not able to pay off the loan, you need to put up assets so the bank can sell them and pay off the loan. That is collateral. Now, collateral value does not equal fair market value because when the bank is selling off your assets, they're doing it in a quick sale kind of format. Fire sale, auction, they're getting rid of them quick. So they're going to get a reduced price because they're trying to move it fast. The bank does not want to own your car, does not want to own your office furniture, your computer, your house. That's not the world they're in. They want to sell it, get the money out of the sale to pay off the loan. They want to do it fast. So therefore, they are not going to give you the collateral value that you think you should get. It's not going to be fair market value. I'll give you some examples. Certificates of deposit, CDs. Yes, they're going to give you 100% value to that because it's cash, especially cash there. But let's look at some of the other ones. Real estate, 75, 80%. It's a range, but they're not giving you 100% collateral value on that because let's say you have a house and you've got $100,000 in equity in your house. Well, if the bank has to repossess your house, they're going to put in a cost factor in there for the closing costs, the real estate commissions, and any fluctuations in housing prices. So that's why they're only going to give you, say, $75,000, $80,000 credit towards your collateral requirement. Stock depends on how risky it is as to what they'll do. Vehicles, equipment, this, all the way down. Had a client who was going to start a web design firm. Well, he wanted $25,000 to buy some office furniture and some computers. So he went to the bank, did all his, submitted all of his paperwork, want $25,000. The banker said, well, what's the collateral? 
They said, that's easy. It's the $25,000 of equipment and you know, office furniture, computers, the whole bit. No, 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 no. You're laughing. You've been there. <laughs> okay. Here's what the biker said. Well, that may be the case. However, if your web design business goes under and we have to auction off your furniture, your equipment, and so forth, do you think we're going to get the same amount of money for that equipment that you purchased it for? No. They may get 25, 30 cents on the dollar. So they turned around and told the guy, I will give you $7,000 towards your collateral requirement. And now I need for you to show me where you can make up the rest. Most people don't realize that. So it is a problem. So you have to make sure you can cover that. Uh, I had a question. Yeah. I'm nervous about using my house as collateral. Can I keep my personal assets out of it? Nervous? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are. You're lucky if you can use your house. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky if you have a house. <laughs> You're lucky. I hate to break the news to you. But if your house represents a majority of your assets, then there's a 99.99% chance that you're going to have to put your house up as collateral. Yes, that's the way it is. If you got a $3 million beach house somewhere paid for, maybe you could put that up instead. But that's just not the case for most people. Sorry about that. Now let's move on to three. Capacity to repay. Do your cash flow projections show that you can pay off the debt? You would be surprised at the number of people who generate cash flow projections and it shows they cannot make the monthly payments. I know it sounds bizarre, but it's true. Don't let that happen to you. And of course, you need a little bit of margin of error there because nobody has a crystal ball and you're not going to be able to predict exactly what your revenues and expenses and profits are going to be over time. Bankers also looking at, are they realistic or not? Sort of to your question earlier. Got to make sure he feels comfortable with that. Fourth conditions. What are the external conditions surrounding you that will either help you or hurt you? What's going on in the economy? What's going on in your industry? Your customers, how are they faring? Are they increasing in number or decreasing? The things you don't have control over that control you. And lastly, you. What's your credit rating? If you have a history of bouncing checks, delinquent payments, no payments, very tough for a bank to justify lending money. So make sure you have a good credit score. Do you have the experience? You have to include your resume. You're going to show the banker that you're the one that can make this thing happen. Reputation in the community. All these things play a part in getting the funding. Pretty easy, huh? Yeah. Question. Yeah. What happens if I get turned down? What do I do next? Ah, heaven forbid you get turned down. But what if you do? First of all, ask the banker why. What is it going to take to get a yes? Then that is what you work on. If they say you need more equity in your business, then that means either you need to put more money in it, or you need to go find an angel, friend, family, or whomever to put additional funds into your company. But it's typically not over when they turn you down. At that point, you now have a set of criteria that you have to work on in order to become fundable. So yes, just do not walk away from the deal. You keep going. That is how bankers 
and other financing institutions made their decisions when it comes to debt financing. Let's go into the wonderful world of grants. As I mentioned before, this is the most misunderstood type of financing that there is. What are they? Be honest with you, there's more media hype than there is reality with grants. There are very, 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 very few grants out there. Sometimes I say there are none, really, for the kind of situations that we come across on a daily basis. But there really are not that many opportunities to find grant funding. If there is any grant out there, it's typically for very small amounts of money. It's not to start your business. Very small amounts of money. Maybe to fund part of a program or something. We typically localize geographical area. It may be your city is wanting to improve the roadside conditions of part of the town. And so they'll incentivize the businesses up and down that road to plant trees, paint their property, to improve the facade. In that case, a possible grant would be something like a matching grant, where they would say to a business owner, we will match up to $3,000 any landscape improvements you do on your property. That's a grant, and grants like that do exist periodically. But there again, it's not enough to start your business. It's a very little amount of money, and they come and go. The grants that are out there are typically for nonprofits, not for businesses that are in a for-profit model, typically for nonprofits. But even for nonprofits, it fits the criteria I mentioned before, small amounts of money and so forth. So there really are not that many grant opportunities. Okay, I can read your minds and you're all saying, but wait a minute, I see the TV commercials and I've been on the internet and there are tons of companies out there that are telling me they're grants. Well, all they have to do is tell you there's one. They're not telling you you qualify. Now, the most common grant that they promote are the Small Business Innovation Research Program Grant, SBIR, and then, of course, the program very similar to it, the uh, Small Business Technology Transfer Program, PR. These are grants, but a very, very, very few number of companies around the country even qualify. These grants are not given to you, the business, because you need them for a certain purpose. The grants are given based on the needs of the government. There are specific research and developmental needs that the government wants private sector companies to do. So the grants are based on the needs of the government, not yours. You will need to have technical and business expertise to pull these things off. These are grants that are going to involve research. Do you have scientists? Do you have engineers on staff? Do you have the equipment to be able to develop this technology that the government is looking for? Most startups don't have that. Most businesses don't have it. So it's a very few number of companies again. And lastly, the few companies that do qualify, they're very competitive in this. So there is competition. We find that these grant companies throw this out as a grant, and it is a grant, but very few companies qualify. So it's there, but not for the kind of situations we find ourselves in. If you don't believe me, and that's okay. That's okay. I can take it. Go to these websites. Research. Do your own research, yes. Because if you think the government has grants out there and they're hiding them, they're hiding them in these websites. These are the websites created by the government to explain what grants they do have. Grants.gov, SBA.gov, business.gov. Check it out. And the best thing about this, 
which 99.9% .9 of these grant companies cannot say, these grant websites are free. Totally free. Check them out. Lastly, other. These are funding possibilities that don't really fit the other three that I want to put in here. Leasing. Leasing is renting rather than buying. It may be that it's better for you to lease the equipment versus purchase it. It's an option. Supplier credit. You may not think of this as a funding source, but it is. Think of it this way. If you're buying material from a supplier and they're giving you 30 days, but you go to them and say, can I pay you in 90 days? Then you just got a 60 day loan. So it's extending the amount of time in which you have to pay off that invoice. And you can use that money for something else. Customer credit. This is where instead of extending a customer 30 days payment, get a, a down payment up front. Ask for a part of the cost up front. Or even shrink the payment period from 30 days down to 15. Again, this gets your money sooner. So you're not giving the loan to your customer, you're keeping it with yourself. Because when you extend credit to your customers, you're actually issuing loans. Actually issuing loans. So this is a way of pulling that back in. Government related. Here are some government entities that offer some type of funding vehicle. Whether it's low interest rate, guarantees, or whatever. The one I want to mention the, uh, right off the bat is Small Business Administration. Most people think the SBA, Small Business Administration, lends money. No. Only in disaster situations do they lend money. Other than that, they guarantee money. It's all guarantees. So that is a misnomer that's out that I want to make sure I addressed in this presentation. And you can go to the sba.gov website and learn more about what they do. Local government programs, I mentioned the one of the facade grant. A lot of your communities will offer grants periodically to improve the city. So you just need to check with your local community government to see if they've got any grant, you know, grant proposal at that time. Where do we go from here? Yeah. That's the end of our discussion on financing. But if you're interested in learning more, here's what you can do next. Go to the Start button of our website and download the Business Startup and Resource Guide. Also be sure to check out, and I strongly suggest you do this, our Capital Opportunities for Small Businesses Guide. Very important. You can also check out our other training programs that we have on the web. If you'd like to talk to one of our business counselors, you go on the website and you can find the office closest to you. Lastly, within a few days, you're going to get an email that's going to ask you to evaluate today's session. We would appreciate your input because it helps us as we continue building this online educational series. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure and best of luck in funding your startup.